In this video, we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra. What is the fundamental theorem of algebra? And what can it help you to do? Let's say you have a polynomial, P of X, that has a degree N, where N is equal to or greater than 1. If you set that polynomial equal to 0, then that polynomial has exactly N roots. So n can't be 0 or a negative number. As long as n is 1 or larger, then whenever that polynomial is set equal to 0, it's going to have n roots. So here's an example. Let's say if we have a, a linear polynomial, x minus 5, and we set that equal to 0. This is of degree 1. There's only one solution. If you were to graph y equals x minus 5, it will look like this. It intersects the x-axis at one point, in this case at 5. If you solve the equation, you're going to get the root x equals 5. So because we have a degree 1 polynomial, there's exactly one root. In this case, one real solution. Here's another example. Let's say if we have the equation y is equal to x squared minus 4. This is a parabola that has been shifted down 4 units. It's going to look like this. Notice the degree of this parabola. It's degree 2. So n, n is equal to 2, which means it has exactly 2 roots. So there's two solutions to this equation. And we can see that based on where the graph touches the x-axis. It touches it here and here. So if we set p of x, this is going to be our p of x. If we set it equal to 0, so if we set x squared minus 4 equal to 0 and solve for x, we're going to get two solutions. So we can factor it using the difference of perfect squares method. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 4 is 2. We get plus or minus 2. And if you set each factor equal to 0 using the zero product property, you're going to get two solutions. x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to positive 2. So based on the fundamental theorem of algebra, we have a polynomial of degree 2, and we got exactly two roots. Now what about this? Let's say if we have y is equal to x squared plus 4. So we have a polynomial of degree 2. So we must also have exactly two roots or two solutions. Now, if we were to graph it, this is a parabola that's been shifted vertically up four units because of the plus four. So this point right here, the y-intercept, that is at four, or zero comma four. Now, notice that this graph does not touch the x-axis. So because it doesn't intersect the x-axis, there's no real solution or no real roots. But according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, we have exactly two roots. And that's still true. We still have two roots. It's just those roots are not real. What it means is that we have two imaginary solutions or two imaginary roots. So let's set our polynomial equal to 0. And let's solve for those two imaginary roots. So if we set x squared plus 4 equal to 0, we can't factor it like we did the last time because we don't have a negative sign here. So what we need to do is move the 4 to the other side. Subtracting both sides by 4, we get x squared is equal to negative 4. So next, we need to take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of negative 4. Well, we're going to break it down a bit. So first, I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1, b 
because 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Now the square root of 4, we can write that as plus or minus 2. The square root of negative 1, this is something you need to know, is equal to the imaginary number i. So we get plus or minus 2i. So we have two imaginary solutions. The first one is x is equal to positive 2i, and the second one is equal to is x is equal to negative 2i. So according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, we have a degree 2 polynomial. We got two exact roots, or exactly two roots. But because the graph does not touch the, the x-axis, those roots are imaginary roots. Now, let's say if we have a cubic function, y is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. Using the fundamental theorem of algebra, determine the number of roots that this polynomial has, and also determine the types of roots that it has. Is it real roots, imaginary roots, and how much of each of those roots do we have in this polynomial? So feel free to pause the video. Now there's two ways we could do this. We can do this analytically or graphically. Let's start analytically and then we'll confirm my answer by graph. So the first thing we want to do is identify what type of polynomial we're dealing with. So we look at the highest exponent. The highest exponent in this polynomial is three. So we're dealing with a degree, a polynomial of degree three which means this polynomial has exactly three roots. So now we need to know how many, what type of roots we're dealing with. Do we have three real roots? Do we have, or is there any imaginary roots? By the way, imaginary roots always come in pairs. So you can't have one imaginary root, nor can you have three imaginary roots. It's always even. You can have two imaginary roots or four imaginary roots. So let's list the options that we have. With three roots, this could be three real roots and no imaginary roots. That's option one. Option two, we have one real root and two imaginary roots. So with three roots, these are the only two options that we have. The question is which one? Is it option A or option B? Well, let's find out. Let's set this polynomial equal to zero. And let's factor it. Notice that the first two terms has the same ratio as the last two terms. If you look at the coefficients, this is one negative two, and this is one negative two. When you see that, you could factor by grouping. So in the first two terms, I'm going to take out the GCF, which is x squared. x cubed divided by x squared is x. And negative 2x squared divided by x squared is negative 2. In the last two terms, I'm just going to take out 1. When you take out 1, you're going to be left with x minus 2. So now the GCF between these two terms is going to be x minus 2. So I'm going to factor out and x minus 2, and here I'll be left with x squared. When I take out x minus 2 here, I'm left with plus 1. Now at this point, what we can do is set each factor equal to 0. So if we set x minus 2 equal to 0, once we add 2 to both sides, we'll get our first real solution, which is x is equal to 2. Now if we set x squared plus 1 equal to 0. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we get x squared is equal to negative 1. And then if we take the square root, the square root of negative 1 is going to be plus or minus i. So we got our two solutions. x is equal to i. And then the other one, x is equal to negative i. Imaginary solutions always comes in pairs. So we can see that option B is the right option. We have one real root 
and we have two imaginary roots, which still gives us a total of exactly three roots. Now, let's analyze it graphically. So I'm using an online graphing calculator at desmos.com. And let's type in the function y is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. So notice that we only have a one x-intercept, which is at 2 comma 0. So the x-intercept, that is the real root or the real solution, which is what we have, x equals 2. So because we only have one x-intercept or one real root, the other two roots must be imaginary. So analyzing it graphically, you can quickly determine you know, if you have any imaginary roots. If you have exactly three roots, but only one x-intercept, then the other two roots must be imaginary. So that's how you can confirm your answer graphically.